Thankfully, the heavy rains appear to be behind us, although many flood evacuation alerts and orders remain in place for now. Uh, for today and the weekend, Environment Canada is predicting wet snow for East Vancouver Island, the Malahat, Victoria, Vancouver, Howe Sound and the Fraser Valley. And snow is also predicted for northwestern British Columbia as well as the southern interior and southwest areas of the province. There are currently no flood watches or flood warnings in effect. We appear to be moving into more seasonal cold weather that we're used to seeing uh, in early December. With the uh, extreme weather now past us, we continue to see more stability on our highways network. Since it reopened yesterday, Highway 1 uh, through the Lower Mainland has moved well. Um, this is an unusual time though, and I urge everyone who must travel to drive with caution. Last night we had a rock slide on Highway 12, closing the road between Lytton and Lillooet. Crews are on site now, clearing debris. We do hope to have Highway 12 open uh, later today. Highway 99 between Pemberton and Lillooet will remain closed today as a result of a slide that occurred uh, Wednesday evening. Fortunately, all the other routes that are open in some capacity uh, are operating well. That includes Highway 3 east of Princeton, where floodwaters have now receded, allowing that route to resume to two-way traffic. Since the first storms hit almost three weeks ago, British Columbians have been doing the right thing. They've been making the right choices that put their communities first, whether that's reducing fuel use or avoiding driving on roads impacted by weather or moderating their purchases. When we were working to get supply chains up and running, it's been a collective effort by our people in an extraordinary time. But we can't let up. We're not out of the woods yet. Every day sees us closer to getting through the immediate crisis so that we can focus on recovery. I'd like to touch briefly on our supply chain. Yesterday, I met with representatives from the trucking sector as well as others involved in the supply chain logistics of our province. I met to hear directly from those companies on the ground. It was primarily a listening exercise. We asked what we're doing well as a province, what we can do better, and how government can best support the people and companies who are moving uh, goods to communities around BC. Between Highway 3, our lone commercial truck route to the interior, and the detours that are available now through Washington State, We've now seen over 10,000 trucks move products around our province. CP Rail has been moving freight. Uh, CN is working toward a mainline reopening in Vancouver, expected this weekend. Uh, airlines have continued to increase their cargo flights, and together this has made a tremendous difference. Because at the end of the day, it's the efforts of people I have just mentioned who benefit the most when the shelves of their local stores are fully stocked. So thank you to all those who've been obeying the essential travel orders and doing the right thing in their personal lives uh, and in the way their families consume products that have been in short supply. From repairing roadways to finding creative ways to move products, this has truly been a remarkable effort by thousands and thousands of people. It has involved the unprecedented coordination between Indigenous First Nations governments and local governments. Hundreds of companies have been involved as well as labour groups. Everyone has pulled together for the common good and it's been very, very special to witness this happen. We still have a long way to go our, to, to get our supply chains back to where we want to have them, but we're considering, uh, uh, considering where we are just a few short weeks after the most unprecedented storm events in the province's history. The progress has been remarkable and inspiring. And I would now like to uh, introduce uh, the Minister of Agriculture, Lana Popham, to provide an update. Good morning, thank you for joining us. Yesterday evening, uh, Minister Bebo, the Minister, Federal Minister of Agriculture and I held a round table discussion with 60 agricultural stakeholders that were representing many of the industries that have been affected by the floods. It was a great opportunity to hear directly uh, about the concerns of those impacted and also about what the short term and longer term needs are. These conversations give us a greater better picture when it comes to putting an agri recovery program together and we will continue to get that finalized as soon as possible. Next week, Minister B. Bo and I plan to be on the ground together out in the Fraser Valley, uh, weather permitting of course, and I look forward to her joining me to have those face-to-face -face conversations that are so critical right now. As I mentioned yesterday, as the waters recede, we can get a better picture of mortalities and how it may uh, affect production. 
our hearts continue to be with the folks that are struggling with the very difficult situations that are happening right now. But last night we heard from Harvey Sasaki, the chair of the BC Chicken Marketing Board. He noted that we had 61 poultry premises within the evacuation zone and amazingly, 97% of the laying chickens survived. We're seeing stories like that come out now. Um, we might have been hearing about turkey shortages, possibilities, but I can assure you that only some holiday meals together. I'd like to recognize the collective efforts of all the poultry industry in pulling together and helping one another as we've seen in other industries. I got a bit of good news this morning coming out of the Sumas Prairie. One poultry farm, Orania Farms, has finished clearing and sanitizing two of their large poultry barns. Fresh shavings have been laid and they're expecting new chicks to be delivered on Monday. Uh, I'd just like to give them a huge shout out for all of the work they've been doing. They've been working around the clock. I also got some good news from the dairy industry this morning. 98% of cows from the Sumas Prairie survived the flood. This is really due to farmers working together and communities making sure that they had those farmers' backs. A dairy farmer I mentioned last week who spent 48 hours feeding his cows hay while they stood neck deep in water let me know that as soon as the waters were able to recede enough, the Abbotsford Rugby Association came in and helped them clean up those barns. They cleaned hundreds of stalls and then even assisted the family removing uh, stuff from their soggy basement. And after they did that, they moved on to help other farmers. I've also heard that the hockey team did the same thing. will get back up on their feet. Some have asked how we're assessing the number of farms right now that are in the evacuation areas. Using data from BC Assessment, we know that there's eight, uh, 817 parcels of land registered as some type of farm use uh, as of yesterday. This includes 159 registered livestock and cattle premises that are registered through our ministry's voluntary premise ID program. I'd like to take the time to encourage ranchers and livestock operators who aren't registered with Premises ID to do so. It allows us to uh, keep track of things um, more quickly during emergencies. And just a reminder that although this is voluntary right now, it will be mandatory in 2022.